What is the problem with the Qataris for your country? What is it they're doing that so offends you? So I think there's two ways to look at this. First, is this a diplomatic agreement, disagreement, or is this more of a philosophical disagreement? I tend to think our differences with Qatar go beyond the diplomatic and tend to more into the philosophical. If you ask UAE, Saudi, Jordan, Egypt, Bahrain, what kind of Middle East they want to see 10 years from now, it will be fundamentally opposed to what I think Qatar wants to see 10 years from now. What we would like to see is a more secular, stable, prosperous, empowered, strong governments. What we've seen Qatar do for the last 10 to 15 years is support groups like the Muslim Brotherhood, Hamas, Taliban, Islamist militias in Syria, Islamist militias in Libya, exactly the opposite direction we think our region needs to go. So our disagreement is about what the future of the Middle East should look like. And that's not something that's we have been able to square with the Qataris for a long time. We are ready to sit down with Qatar tomorrow and negotiate the 13 demands. If the Qataris are willing to say that they're ready to negotiate, so far they haven't been able to say that. But we want a solution, and the solution has to be a diplomatic solution. You can't sit around the table with us and support the groups that are threatening to kill us and kill our children. You can't be inside the tent while you are supporting the groups that undermine our security. Groups that the United States of America considers to be um, international terrorist organizations that we have designated as such, Hamas and the Taliban, have offices in Doha. It is a consistent pattern of behavior, and it's the continued attempt to undermine countries like Egypt, countries like Saudi Arabia, countries like the UAE. There is absolutely no element of regime change or military piece of this. We want a policy change. We want behavior change. And we would welcome the opportunity to sit down and discuss it. What is the basic split and the basic fear of Iran? Is it that they are supporting uh, terrorism and they are supporting groups that are uh, in opposition to the views of the United Arab Emirates and to the views of Saudi Arabia and to the views of, of other Sunni Arab states? Is that essentially the conflict that Iran is exporting their revolution to other places and you want to stop them because you want to make sure they don't dominate the region. Not only does Iran export the revolution, it's in their constitution. It's the only country in the world where enshrined in their constitution is the concept of promoting and exporting their revolution. And they've done it with great success in places like Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and now Yemen. They've even reached as far as Afghanistan. So our concern is the expansionist policy of Iran, is the hegemonic behavior of Iran. So the core demands, if you step back and look at what we went through with Qatar in uh, 2014, just to put some context behind what's happening today. 2014, uh, Saudi, UAE, and Bahrain pulled their ambassadors from Doha over the exact same set of grievances, the exact same set of issues, support for terrorism, meddling in our internal affairs, and incitement and provocation. In November 2014, the late King Abdullah hosted a meeting in Riyadh, and he invited all the GCC leaders, and he had a very, very open conversation. We'll call it a very honest airing of his grievances with the Qatari leader. And at the end of that meeting, there was a document that was signed, and we called it the Riyadh Agreement. And I brought a copy with me. And it's right here, and it has the signature of the Emir of Qatar. It was over the exact same set of issues. And Qatar promised to stop supporting the groups and the individuals that were giving us a hard time. Unfortunately, everything that has been signed into this agreement has been violated for the last three years. So the collective frustration with the four countries today is at a new level. So the demands, while they're more specific, they are still in line with exactly what the Qataris signed up to in 2014. We are ready to sit down with Qatar tomorrow and negotiate the 13 demands if the Qataris are willing to say that they're ready to negotiate. So far, they haven't been able to say that. But we want a solution, and the solution has to be a diplomatic solution. But the willingness to find a solution lies not in Riyadh, not in Abu Dhabi, and certainly not in Washington. It lies in Doha. Okay, this uh, disagreement with the late King Abdullah took place in what year? In November of 2014. Oh, in 2014, so three years ago. Yes. Uh, so this didn't just happen because of the visit of President Trump to Riyadh and the Arab Summit Conference? Absolutely not. This has been 
This is like a pot that's been sitting on the stove for a really long time and it's finally boiled over.